Now, this is a type of chemical reaction whose energy definition we have to learn for the exam. It will come in handy for many things. Also next year. But now we are doing definition mainly. Karte. What is it? It is the, ID, it is the term or the, the, or the uh, enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous are formed from elements in their standard state. That is what standard enthalpy of atomization represents. It represents an energy change where you start from elements in the standard state, but you make one mole of gaseous atoms. Now, there is a link to this and bond energies, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but it is simply making one mole of the product, a gaseous atom from its element in the standard state. So that's why there's one mole of chlorine here. And chlorine in the standard state is Cl2 gas, so we'll take half a mole of Cl2 gas. For metals, this can be applied to not just, it doesn't apply only to non-metals, it applies to metals also. While bond energy only applies to non-metals because covalent bonds only exist in non-metals. But this, you can make one mole of gaseous sodium atoms also. And that would be the energy required to convert sodium from its standard state to one mole of gaseous atoms. And here, clearly the value is positive because you have to heat them from solid to gas. Obviously, the solid to gas direct change is also known as sublimation. So this is exactly that. It's a sublimation. But this is energy required per mole of sodium going from solid to gas. There are many more changes also. There are stuff like, I mean, I'll just write a few first and then talk about them. On the next slide, you already have a couple of them. Let's say I want to talk about the atomization of bromine. So bromine, gaseous atom from bromine in the standard state. And since the gaseous atom has to be one mole, this will have to be half. Ah, absolutely. If I want to make, for example, calcium gas, this would be the standard enthalpy of atomization of calcium. It would be from what? Calcium in the standard state, that is solid. If I want it to be about iodine, I would need to have one mole of iodine. And from iodine in the standard state, that would be half I2 solid. And one more thing, sulfur. Let's say I want to talk about the atomization of sulfur. That would mean one mole of sulfur, gaseous atoms. From what? S8, S8 is how it's found in the standard state and it's solid. So one over? <coughs> Absolutely. So all of these and this, for example, this is known as the atomization of sulfur. This would be the atomization of iodine. This would be the atomization of calcium and so on. And this will be the atomization of bromine. Now the most important place this is tested out is actually in MCQs. They'll give you one equation, they'll say, okay, five, four equations, which is the atomization of bromine. That's really what it's used for. That's basically it. That's where it's tested in the exam. But obviously, there are things that you can think about here. You can explore your mind here. For example, I'm gonna scroll up first and then come back down, is that okay? Now if you compare chlorine to another reaction of chlorine that we know of, known as bond energy or bond dissociation energy of chlorine, which is when one mole of chlorine bonds are broken to make gaseous atoms. And you will realize that looks like twice the reaction of the one I've just given to you, Pelese. Isn't that? So basically, atomization is half of the above reaction. So atomization of chlorine is half of the bond dissociation energy of Cl2. Absolutely. But it can be said for everything, but yes, ya kar sakte. Ek aur example hai, ya aap oxygen mein bhi dek sakte. If I do the same thing for oxygen, the bond energy of oxygen is when O2 molecule breaks the double bond to make O2 two moles of O gaseous atoms. On the other hand, atomization of oxygen will be to make one mole of gaseous atoms from oxygen in the standard state. And in this case also, the atomization of oxygen is half the bond energy of oxygen molecule. So here is relationship. Hai. Kuch kuch mein bhi ho hai. This was easy because 
the standard state of the same atom is also gas. So gas is gas, there's no state change. On the other hand, when I scroll down for the examples I've shown you for bromine, for example. Now bromine may standard state of bromine is liquid to gas. But in reality, what is the bond energy of bromine Key equation? It is Br, Br, gas becoming 2 Br, gas. This equation represents what? The bond energy of Br, Br. But it isn't twice that of the lower equation, is it? Because this may liquid here. So maybe we will first need to, <coughs> if I want to use bond energies, so I want to make from liquid to gas. So basically going from this stage to this stage involves two steps. Involves first converting liquid to molecule to gaseous molecule and then breaking the bond of gaseous molecules to make them gaseous atoms. So this, you can actually make a hair cycle out of it. Ke pehle aap isse kya kare? Br2 gas banai. Or phir Br2 gas se <coughs> Br gas banai. Meaning this, this step is half the vaporization of bromine. And this arrow that I'm pointing to is half the bond energy of bromine. So what you can say the atomization of bromine is half the bond, half the kya gate hai, delta H of vaporization because that is liquid to gas and then half the bond energy. Iodine may be aise kuch hota hai. Sulfur may be aise kuch hota Like look at the last thing I gave. Sulfur, right? You can first convert to sulfur 8 gas. So you could have, this is 1 8 the vaporization of sulfur and then this to this. This is 1 8 what? The bond energy of sulfur in S8. Because S8 may koon se bond hote hain. You know? But yaan kitne bond toot rahe hain? Now when you know, have you know the sulfur ka, is me kya hai? Sulfur S8 is this. One, S8 me kitne bonds hai? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight bonds. So it's one eight times eight times SS bond na? Because the one eight, you need only the energy of one of the bonds. You break all the eight bonds and you divide by one eight. Say, on the next slide, actually don't, I don't want to confuse you with this stuff. This is not asked in the exam, but I want you to clear a relationship between bond energy and atomization. They might seem to be the same thing in some cases, but it's not all cases. It's only the same idea when the molecule in a standard state is also a gas and the product is also a gas. Because the second year, the first chapter we'll do will be this. So the last slide, I was saying this, which I said to you, like iodine to iodine gas, sublimation and then bond breaking. Liquid to gas, vaporization and then bond breaking. Okay? So this is the end of the chapter. Okay, this is just a definition that you have to do for the questions. So now I'm going to make you do one question for this. Okay, one question for this. <coughs> 